Everyone. Hi, hello and welcome, MicroPunter here again and welcome to another Saturday microscopy live stream. Hope you're doing fine. <laughs> I am doing fine myself. Uh, today I would like uh, to do a little bit of a uh, plant uh, microscopy. Um, yeah, and uh, but before I start off, uh, I think I have to put my glasses on again. I would like to read again the chat and I would like to ask you um, if you're able to hear me loud and clear and uh, if everything works out uh, technically. I think uh, everything should be working. Okay. Um, at least I can hear myself uh, and uh, everything fine. Um, yeah, uh, it's been it's always been a tradition that um, during the first uh, couple of minutes uh, that uh, you also try out the chat, please. And maybe you can tell me from where you are from. Usually in the first uh, couple of minutes, it takes a few minutes time until more and more people join in into the live stream. And therefore, I don't start off right away, but I give it about uh, five minutes or so until more and more people start to join. OK, and I always read uh, the comments here um, as well. There is already a question right at the very beginning um, about uh, some biofilm formation in fermented uh, uh, in a fer fermented soybean drink. Um, yeah, and uh, loud and clear. Okay, and I can hear you. Hello from Serbia, from Australia, from Florida. Okay, from Scotland, from America, Washington State, Honolulu. Um, yeah, from Vienna in Austria. Yes, good evening from the Netherlands. Yes, okay, I think we're all fine. From Vietnam, from Lebanon, greetings from India. Oh, I love it. Okay, so first of all, welcome again to a Saturday live stream. Um, what I would like to do, uh, for those of you who are new, I'm usually for a little bit over an hour, I um, every Saturday I'm yeah dedicating this live stream to a certain topic related to microscopy. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of uh, more or less uh, complicated specimen preparations, a little bit hobby. Uh, that's the whole point. Uh, so um, yeah, it's a little bit for those of us uh, who would like to yeah, observe nature under the night microscope and today I want to just uh, show you some um, plant preparation techniques. Um, yeah, I would uh, also like to um, answer questions. So if you have uh, some questions and if you post them into the chat, uh, then of course, uh, if you know the answer or if you have some comments, then please write them yourself. Otherwise, I can also try to answer them. I have to say I want to try to answer them because of course, I'm not able to answer all um, of uh, the question. Okay. Um, okay, ah, okay, there has already been a, a correction here. Natto is not a drink, it's soybeans with a biofilm. Okay, interesting. So there is a, already a question right at the beginning. Um, so that's basically a fermented soybean. And this soybean is uh, fermented by bacterium. And uh, there is the question of whether we would like to uh, analyze this. I have to tell you, I don't know this, uh, how this actually works. Um, I can actually, and I have already tried this before, to ferment uh, some milk, for example, or um, using so-called uh, kefir, which is a, a fungus and bacteria. So fermenting is possible. Also yogurt is fermented, but I have not uh, done this a lot with natto yet. So I have to uh, do a little bit of research here. So and for those of you joining in right now, this is the very first comment um, in the live chat. There has already been a question about this. Yeah, um, yeah, I can try to investigate this, but honestly, I have to tell you, I don't know much about it yet. OK, so um, so this is, uh, yeah, lots of uh, greetings and hello from all over the world. OK, from Israel, from London. OK, from from uh, Rio Grande Valley in Texas. OK. Um, and the question already, where do you get most of your microscopy gear? Do you look on eBay or special stores or are there secondhand stores for lab equipment? Okay. Yes. And yes, it is 3.30 a.m. in some countries, uh, three o'clock in the morning. Well, I think I feel very happy and honored that you're uh, willing to join in. Um, where I am right now in the Central Europe, it's uh, half past nine in the evening. Um, yeah. And uh, for those of you who, of course, are not able to join in right on time, there is, uh, of course, everything will be available, um, yeah, of course, afterwards. Yes, in this very channel, for those of you who are new to this channel, they, we're celebrating now 20,000 subscribers. But I do have a main channel, another main YouTube channel as well called Simply Microbe Hunter and where I'm posting about once or twice a week uh, some videos about microscopy on a variety of topics. I would like to invite you also to check out my other channel, uh, which is a little bit larger. But this channel I want to dedicate um, a little bit to um, yeah, doing some practical um, microscopy work. 
Okay, so what I would like to do is for those of you who uh, were part of the live stream last week, I made, I just wanted to catch up a little bit, I made uh, two permanent slides using some glue. Okay, so I've, I've been using this glue, which is a, um, a PVA glue, to make permanent slides um, of water fleas and of Artemia brine shrimp. And I would just like to check now how they are after one week. Okay, because you're probably going to, so it's simply a catch up, uh, yeah, for those of you who were here last week. And then I'm going to, that's the microscopy view, by the way. And then I simply would like to move, go on with the actual topic of plant, uh, preparing plants. Yeah, and I have to now find it. Um, but uh, there were not a, a lot of them, but there were some, um, yeah, um, especially here on the side, some, I'm going to change the magnification here a little bit. Um, and there were some of those Artemia brine shrimp and I have to find them. And the drying process actually was not very good. Okay, so maybe I think it was, was it on the other side? Yeah, um, I tried it and it did not work well. Um, okay, that is now the, ah, that's not the brine shrimp one. That is the, um, the water flea one. So what we have over here, so for the water flea, it did seem to work a little bit, but, but not for the brine shrimp. So what you see here is, is this is now one of the Daphnia, um, basically in this glue mounting medium. And uh, yeah, we can see that because uh, maybe of the relatively hard um, yeah, <laughs> exoskeleton, the shape uh, was still maintained. So I think it was okay. This round structure that you see over here, that is an ear bubble. Yeah. So you see that it, yeah, the mounting medium does kind of work for, uh, for those water fleas. But uh, let me quickly check over. I'm going to move quickly over. So I'm going to disappear for a second. I'm going to check if I find something else here. Uh, okay, you can see that uh, yeah, there are lots of other things here. There were not so many of them. Um, it, was more of a, it was more of an experimental slide that I prepared here. Yeah. Okay, here, here, here we are again. It's a little bit too bright. So yeah, that's basically how it looks like. Um, yeah, so I, I would say it works the, the thing. So what I would like to do is the following. Um, I'm, I'm going to, even if the questions are a little bit off topic, I uh, decide uh, to, um, to, to promise you to answer them in any case. Uh, but of course I want to show you a couple of things here as well. So there was a question already, where do you get most of your microscopy gear? Do you look on eBay or special um, or, okay. So um, there are different places where you can get the microscopy gear. Um, essentially it depends uh, a little bit on the type of microscope that you buy. If you want to buy it secondhand, eBay is indeed a possibility. Um, there are occasionally some secondhand shops uh, available that also do some maintenance, but you have to actually um, look for them a little bit. Um, otherwise, if you uh, want to uh, buy relatively low cost microscopes, of course, Amazon would be a possibility or you talk uh, to, uh, because many of the microscope shops, they have uh, brands, they have also an Amazon website, uh, Amazon web shop rather, or their web website, that is possible. But um, as soon as you start paying a little bit more for a microscope, so if, um, I don't know, maybe several thousand euros or dollars, I mean, that, that's already a, a fairly advanced microscope, um, I would probably contact the company directly. So for those uh, really brand microscopes like Olympus, Nikon, Zeiss, Leica, those really traditional brands, you should uh, they don't sell over Amazon. You gotta either uh, contact the company directly, um, or you have to go secondhand. Okay. So Asian supermarkets have uh, prepared natto. Yes, unfortunately, I'm in Europe here, so I'm not able to buy it. Okay. Uh, maybe uh, there are some Asian shops maybe that sell it. Recently bought a microscope and wondering where to find good samples to look from parks, etc. Do you recommend Weinberg filters? Well, first of all. Um, if you want to uh, make filters yourself like Reinberg and dark fil fil filters, I highly recommend them, but they can be easily made yourself. Okay, so especially Reinberg filters, dark field patch stops, they can be made yourself. Okay, pond water makes great samples. If you want to observe pond water, then do not just observe the water itself, but take some of the sediment from the, from the ground. Okay, because in the pond water itself, in the floating in the water, um, you won't find so many things, but on the ground a lot. Brine shrimp are cool to look at with a microscope. Yeah, uh, I made a live stream last week um, about those, so if you want to check, okay. Um, are the brine shrimp still holding their breath? <laughs> no, <laughs> I overfed them and they died, but I made a second sample and uh, they are living, okay. So um, don't overfeed them, 
Yeah, so I've got a second one over here um, and they're doing fine. But the first one for last week, I added a little bit too much food and it turned a little bit all, I don't know. Yeah, um, so it didn't uh, quite work out. So it, they're delicate, okay? Um, yeah, and is that Olympus BX53? Yes, that's correct. That's my microscope, okay? It's a little bit off topic, but can you someday make a video about culturing, for example, stentor? And in the video, you got the exact details. Okay, so culturing uh, certain ciliates, I can try to do this as well. Okay, if I may ask, does spring or uh, summer have the most water organisms? Um, uh, quite uh, quite uh, easily answerable summer um, because uh, this is when the temperature is warmer and there has already been more time for um, microorganisms to grow in the, the pond. Okay, uh, but if you collect water samples in winter, like I have done, just a second. Okay, what you do is you collect the water sample, some leaves and some pond water, and you simply let it stand at home, um, and then it's warmer as well. And then if you give it a couple of days, then microorganisms are also going to start to grow. Yeah, so that is essentially something that I recommend. What program are you, uh, do you use uh, for live and make your photo with a green background? Yes, I use a, a, live, a free live streaming software called OBS Studio. And in the background, I painted my wall green. So I'm not using just a, a regular cloth green screen, but actually I painted my wall because it's the easiest way. Okay, I have a Swift microscope. Yes, are you going to use a microtome for the plants? Yes, I can do that, uh, but I was not so happy with the result. Okay, so I'm going to show you some, uh, some other methods here as well. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to now uh, quickly um, start off uh, by showing you um, a couple of uh, yeah, things that you um, might not know yet. And because I would like to uh, do the following, I'm going to um, show you later some prepared slides um, of plants uh, because I would like to teach you a little bit also about plant anatomy so that you uh, understand a little bit better of what's going on here. And um, I'm going to also show you over here what I've done here. These plants here, I have added a little bit of glue. Here it is, this glue here. It's wood glue, regular wood glue on the bottom of the leaf today in the morning. And it started to dry and it became transparent. So it's very difficult to see. So I've got that here. Yeah, maybe you can see that it's a little bit shining. Yeah, so this is actually glue. So it's a, it's a water-based glue. Yeah, also over here a little bit, you're gonna see it's, it's shiny. Okay, this shiny part, that is not from the leaf, but it's actually from the glue. I've got it also over here. Yeah, maybe you see it here a little bit better. Yeah, and over here that's uh, yeah also a leaf and I also added a little bit of glue here on the bottom. And because what I wanted to do now is, is I want to show you um, yeah, the surface of the leaf, uh, which made an impression on the glue. Okay, uh, because you're, you, it's, it might surprise you, we are able to see cells this way as well. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, is I'm going to carefully, well actually I should use some tweezers. I'm, um, I'm going to have to carefully remove, uh, yeah, this glue over here. And when you do that, make sure that you take leaves Make sure that you take leaves that are very smooth on the bottom, okay? And see, that is the glue that I'm now removing, okay? Let's move the plate away. That's the dried glue. And what I'm doing right now is I'm simply putting the dried glue on a microscope slide and that's it. That's it, okay? Um, and let's have a look at it, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch over to the microscope view and uh, let's have a look at uh, this here. Yeah. So you're able to see what I'm doing right now. And okay, this is what I'm, what I'm able to see over here. Let's focus this a little bit. And you see uh, parts of it are a little bit out of focus, parts of it are in focus because it's not entirely flat. But there are a couple of interesting things that we're able to see here already. And what is that? Okay. And I'm going to um, explain this a little bit because I think that's quite nice that uh, you're able to actually um, uh, see so many structures here um, on the glue. So again, this is these are actually what we're able to see here ourselves, but not the cells themselves, but the surface of, of the leaf. And I do have an arrow over here, yeah, where I'm able to explain you a few of these things here. So basically, this here, if you're able to follow the arrow, that's a cell, right? So you see the individual cells here. And then what you see is, is some interesting little, little openings here. And these appear to be the so-called stomata or stomates. These are openings in the leaf 
okay, which allows uh, gases like uh, carbon dioxide to enter the leaf. So the nice thing about this glue method is, is, is that it allows you very easily to actually see the structure um, of the cells of the leaf without actually having to prepare the leaf itself because actually preparing it in such a way is, is, is not so easy because you have to make a very thin cut but the glue actually uh, yeah carries the structure quite well I think okay it looks also I think it looks kind of nice and also artistic a little bit but uh, yeah the, I'm going to go down again with the magnification here yeah and you can actually see now the yeah the surface uh, yeah the surface structure here I think uh, that is, uh, I like the simplicity. I, mean, I like the simplicity of this method, okay? And we're going to have another look uh, as well. And uh, I'm just also going to show you because I did not show you what I have done here. Yeah, so all I have done is, is I've taken some of this white glue. Okay. Yeah, and uh, simply added some white glue on here like this and then I waited until it's dry. And that's it. It's really that simple. Um, so, um, and you want to do this with the bottom side of the leaf. The reason is is that the bottom side contains those uh, typical stomates, uh, the openings, um, yeah, of the cells. Okay. So, yeah. So that's basically was one of them. I, I think I'm just gonna try the other one here as well. Okay. Let's uh, see if this uh, this here works as well. And uh, let's peel this off and let's give this here a try. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to do the following. I'm just going to place it directly on my microscope slide. So let's put it like this and let's put it on here. And uh, let's refocus this again. Yeah. You see over here, what do you see? The cells are significantly smaller, okay? So let's uh, zoom in here a little bit more. Yeah. And here we can see the stomates quite well. I, I really like this plant over here. And I'm going to now show you using an arrow because I'm going to now also show you a prepared slide. It, yeah. So you see those little oval uh, cells over here? Yeah. Uh, in the middle here, this is where there is an opening into the leaf. It's the so-called the stomata or stomates, right? Here as well. And over here again, the individual cells quite nicely visible. Yeah. yeah. So this is a really, uh, yeah. Um, is, is a really nice uh, simple experiment that I recommend that, uh, to try out where you simply can then look at the structure of different surfaces um, and see what impression they leave behind. Okay, I'm going to uh, I'm going to always interrupt myself a little bit simply to uh, go back to the comments. Okay, um, yeah. Are there some websites you can buy specific cultures from, but I haven't tested them? Uh, I'd like to know. Um, it, okay, um, if you're interested in buying uh, certain cultures uh, to observe, for example, if you would like to buy some Daphnia, which are water fleas, um, you want to first uh, go to uh, shops that sell uh, for aquariums because many of those tiny water crustaceans like Daphnia and, and Artemia brine shrimp are sold as fish food, as live fish food. Um, so you can actually buy them there, right? Um, so that is one place. Um, also, um, there are also school supplies companies that sell certain cultures. But I also have to tell you that if you want to buy bacteria um, and if you go to some uh, laboratory supplies companies, you can buy bacteria. Um, but they're extremely expensive because they're laboratory grade and they might not sell you those. But um, because you're not a lab, right? And so for this reason, they don't sell to private people. But if you need, want to have a source of, of safe uh, live bacteria, I can recommend that you buy yourself some yogurt cultures, which can be bought over Amazon. Um, or there are even some, uh, some capsules that people for eating, which contain bacteria, because those bacteria should regenerate the digestive system, because they're bacteria in the digestive system. And if you then swallow those bacteria, then it kind of regenerates your digestive system. System. And those are safe bacteria, okay? And I would recommend that uh, if you want to observe there. Um, okay, what are some websites? Okay, yeah, can the microbes, can I get microbes from soil? Of course, <laughs> um, as, that's an actually nice idea. I can show you how to do this as well. Um, what you have to do is, is uh, uh, the difficulty if you want to get microbes from soil is, is that uh, the soil particles and so on, uh, they might cover up a lot, okay? 
so it might be difficult to find them between the soil particles. So you need a system to kind of filter away the larger soil particles. Okay. Okay. What is a microtome? So this is a question. Okay, you know what I'm going to do is maybe not today because it's a large topic, but a microtome is a device. I've got one over here, which allows you to make very thin cuts. Okay, so what you put is you put a sample in here and then you can use a knife. Where's my knife? Oh, I lost my knife. Oh, here it is. Okay, you use a knife um, and then you cut uh, yeah, across here um, and this allows you to make very, very thin cuts. So that is a microtome. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, try, I was not so happy with this one here, not with a microtome, but actually my knife is kind of dull. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's already explained here in the next one. Okay. Um, when you give them a lot of food, you also have to give them more oxygen with an aerator. At least I never had any issues with overfeeding. Yes, uh, you need to give, of course, they need, um, sometimes you need to, to I'm talking about now the, um, about the, the brine shrimp, they need a lot of air. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Leave impression again, lots of comments just joined here. Have you ever looked at Hydra live before? Uh, not in my life, not in my life. I've not looked at the Hydra in my live uh, stream before, but I made videos of Hydra where I was feeding some um, yeah, water fleas and some copepods and so on to the Hydra and uh, uh, the Hydra was hunting them, right? Um, yeah. Would the image be better with a cover slip over the sample? Well, the image would be, um, uh, it would be more flat, but the problem is it's so thick. And it's not the cover glass, uh, the cover slip that would improve the image quality, but I'd have to add some water. And the problem with the water is that it's going to dissolve the glue. And for this reason, I'm simply doing it dry. Uh, and it would be also quite thick. So actually, yes, cover slip and water would be better. But unfortunately, because of the, um, yeah, the, the, how do you say, the, the glue being uh, dissolving, it would be an issue. Yeah? So, um, Next question, and then we'll go back to the to the topic here. My microscope is binocular, so it doesn't have a dedicated camera port. Is it still possible to use a camera with one of the ports? Uh, the idea is the following. Yes, you can do that. Um, what you do is, is instead of one of the eyepieces, uh, you put in a microscope camera. That is one possibility. Or you put a mobile phone over one of the eyepieces. So yes, you can do photography and video, even if you do not have a trinocular port. Okay, it's, it's not quite as convenient, maybe. Okay, but um, uh, but it's it's quite well possible. So last thing that I would like to try is, is I would like to try show you now the last one over here, um, a little bit. Um, the last here. So this is also one where I put some glue on here. A little bit more difficult to peel off. I have to be careful that it won't, uh, that I'm not destroying it too much. You know, that's how I look. There's still some leaf connected here. You know what? I don't care. I'm just going to leave the leaf uh, on here and I'm going to put the whole thing under the microscope uh, simply to have a look. Okay. So let's go down always with low magnification here. Let's have a, a look at the stomates from over here. And then I'm going to show you some commercial slides and I'm going to show you a little bit of leaf anatomy as well. And, uh, and here we go again. Okay. Yeah. Here we go again. And so again, you see, you're able to see that the, the leaves, not the leaves, but the, the cells again, yeah? Or the surface at least again has a different shape here. Yeah. So that's actually one of the nice things that uh, to, to actually show you that uh, different plants um, have a different shape, or at least the cells, or, the cell, the, the, or at least the, the, the surface of the cells. I wonder what those round things are, okay, uh, that, that you see. Um, that's, uh, but uh, you see this irregular, irregular shape here that, uh, yeah. I, I think, look, it could be, you see this oval structure here that this here is also a stoma, a stomate, right? a, a little hole opening into the, um, into, the, um, into the leaf, okay. So that is uh, one of the nice things to try out. So I encourage you, um, yeah, if you don't have uh, any uh, samples available to directly look at, to, to experiment a little bit around with the glue. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. I'm quickly going through the comments here. Um, which objective is right now? This one, you can always see it over here. Um, and what I this is not a 20 times objective. I, you're not able to see the magnification. It's a 20 times magnification. This is the 10 times magnification. So, um, you can see which objective, yes, okay. 
Um, where do you find Hydras? Um, there, are, there are two places so where I got my Hydra from. Um, one place is from a colleague uh, who I'm working with and he's got a, a many aquariums at home. And uh, he said that they're growing not only on the plants, but also on the glass of the aquarium. And he told me that uh, Hydra sometimes are a big problem because they grow rapidly and there's so many of them. That's one place. And I found, of course, also some Hydra on, on some uh, water samples. So if you get some, some plant material uh, from a pond, for example, if you're lucky, you're also able to find Hydras there. Okay. How do I make a dry mount? You know what? I think... Um, um, I might make a separate video or live stream simply on making dry mounts, um, but uh, to give you a very uh, to give you a very simple answer um, is is the following: um, if you a, a dry mount does not use any um, does not use any mounting medium, uh, no liquid or solid mounting medium, and the easy way of making a dry mount is as follows: is uh, uh, yeah. you take a cover you put what a, a, first of all your sample has to be completely dry. Okay, so for example, insect wings which are completely dry, um, maybe a dry dust, yeah, whatever, um, spores from fungi, dry, okay, whatever it is, some hair or fur. Yeah? And dry mounts are nice because uh, they are quite easy to make, but the image quality is not always the best because the optics are designed that there's water in there. So what you do is, is you take um, whatever you want to make a take a sample of. I have no idea. Um, I'm just going to get something, I don't know, some hair or some dust. You put it on here. You put a cover glass on top. Now, this is a pretty big cover glass, right? But normally, you probably have the smaller ones. And you put thin strips of, paper, uh, of tape around it. That's it. Sticky tape. Yeah, that's the easiest way of making a dry mount. Yeah? Um, if you want to, you can also use some, some people use nail polish, but the problem if with anything liquid, like nail polish on the corner, the problem is, is that uh, uh, the nail polish will be drawn beneath the cover glass and then everything is going to be difficult uh, yeah, to, to keep away the, the nail polish. Right? So I, I would actually say simply um, um, uh, fix the cover glass uh, with uh, some tape. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, that is uh, the question, but I think um, I would uh, make actually a separate video on this, okay? Um, would oil work as a mounting medium? Yes, as a matter of fact, sometimes oil as a mounting medium, kitchen oil, vegetable oil is preferred, especially if the specimen is hydrophobic. I wanna give you an example of this. If you want to take some bird feathers, small parts of bird feathers, and, and if you uh, put it into water, it's not going to work well because the bird feathers are oily and greasy. So they stick together. But if you um, use oil as a mounting medium for bird feathers, because bird feathers are oily and greasy and the oil is of course oily, then the bird feathers actually look much nicer. Okay, they, they don't stick together, they go apart better and you see it better. So can oil be used as a mounting medium? Yes, and as a matter of fact, sometimes it's the best one that you use. Okay. Yeah, so I quickly go I'll go over. He's got a video. I use glue directly on the and stick the plant. Okay, um, would damage to the lens unless immersion oil. Uh, okay, I get what you mean here. Um, 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 what I meant is, and that's really important, uh, you can use vegetable oil here and then you put the cover glass on it, but do not use, it's important, do not use vegetable oil instead of immersion oil. Okay, because the immersion oil goes, uh, that's immersion oil here, goes between the lens and the cover glass. So that's something completely different. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the following. Yeah, so you have seen now some, some leaf impressions, but I would like to now show you another nice uh, little um, experiment. And uh, maybe you're kind of wondering also a little bit about this uh, strange star-like structure that, that you saw in the thumbnail at the beginning of yeah, introducing the video. I put the title and it was a strange structure. That's a so-called a trick comb. I'm going to show you um, how to prepare it from a leaf here. But here I got some, some, some how do you call this, uh, so some peppers. Yeah. And uh, vegetable. it's a little bit dry already because, uh, yeah. And what I would like to do is I'm going to show you now a way of how you can prepare that to actually look at some of the plant cells. The idea today is, is to show you a little bit, a couple of, of, of preparation techniques. And then I'm also going to show you a little bit how to use uh, the, yeah, the microtome. And what I'm doing right now is, is the following. You can do the same thing with a tomato, by the way. Yeah. And the nice thing about this here is, is that it has a skin on the surface here, right? And uh, and this th skin is, is relatively tough. And then you have the pulp on the inside. And uh, I'm going to show you now what I'm going to do. I take the dull part of the, of the knife. And, 
And that's what I'm doing. You see? I'm scratching off the pulp. Okay, until I have a very thin, yeah, I would say very thin layer of cells here. And uh, I'm going to put this under the microscope now. Okay, um, so all I'm doing, I have to do is I have to take some scissors. I hope that I made it thin enough. You, you don't want to overdo that, otherwise you're going to damage uh, the skin. But I tried this um, with uh, tomatoes also and also with peppers. You can try it with, I guess, with pretty much any vegetables. Um, because I would like to look at the cells again. All right, and so what I'm doing right now is, is of course, I'm going to cut this off here. I put it on a microscope slide here. Okay, here, uh, it's difficult for you to see. Uh, here, now you see it, the dark background. Yeah. Um, what I usually do is, um, yeah, I don't put the water directly on here, but I put the cover glass first, simply to make sure that it's flat enough, and then look what I bought myself. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, because I don't have r running water in my room, I bought myself one of those uh, bottles here. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit too much, uh, yeah, water. So I, I need a, I'm super prepared again because I forgot my little dish to pour out the water. Just a second and look at the drawer. And uh, I've got a dish here, a little, little tiny Petri dish. And usually what I do is the following. So those, uh, those water bottles are, are quite, uh, quite practical. And uh, then um, I either use a pipette or sometimes if I don't have a pipette, I use tweezers here. And I simply apply the water directly using my tweezers and then capillary action will actually soak in um, the water. Yeah. But for whatever reason is, ah, yeah, it works very slowly. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you're able to see this, but it's starting to fill up now. So that is a, a, an improvised way as well. And now let's have a look at this under the microscope. And let's remove this here again. So just, and uh, let's have a look now at the real cells, real plant cells. Hoping that I made it thin enough. Okay, and here we go. You know what, I'm going to change this a little bit around. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, yeah. That's the side, and uh, of course, what we're able to see is the cell wall. I have to tell you, I already had better results because I'm actually seeing multiple cell layers now. Okay, it's, a, it's actually a little bit disappointing compared to the results that I got before. Um, but if you just focus through it, then you're actually able to see that there, there are two cell layers, yeah, um, on top of each other, right? Yeah. So that is uh, basically, yeah. Let's just trace this uh, cell. Just look at this here, and then when I refocus, yeah then yeah, a different cell layer starts to come into focus. Yeah. So I've got two different cell layers over here. So essentially what you can do is, is you can experiment around with that a little bit and uh, s compare how the cells actually look different. Yeah. So this is now basically a, a, a wet mount, a very simply prepared wet mount simply by using the scratching method. But what I would like to do now is, is I'm going to show you now a commercially prepared slide, a stained slide, a commercially prepared one um, of a tulip, which is a flower, okay? And you're going to be quite surprised how nice this actually looks like, okay? And I'm showing this to you because I want to use this here um, also to explain it to you a little bit what you're able to see. Okay, I have to find the focus. It's not in focus. Here we go. Okay. So that is now uh, the, uh, yeah, specimen. I need to go up with the brightness a little bit. And uh, this is um, uh, quite nice because, let me open it here a little bit more. Uh, still not quite happy. Let's make an adjustment here. Okay. Yes, so that's a little bit better. So what I'm gonna show you over here is this, uh, those are um, oval cells that you see over here. Um, yeah, there are actually two of them, one on the left, one on the right, are so-called guard cells. And in the center, the, on this oval opening, that is the stomate. 
So basically the opening into the leaf uh, of the tulip um, so that gases uh, like uh, yeah, carbon dioxide is able to enter it for photosynthesis. The cells here, um, each one have a nucleus. So you see this little dot over there, that's the nucleus. And of course on the outside here is, is the cell wall. Yeah. So and what we, I have done before, of course, is I was not able to see the nuclei and so on because I was only able to see the surface texture, right? I cannot see, with the glue, I cannot see into the cell. Yeah. But over here, when you actually have a, a cross section of, of a leaf, or, or let's in this case, it's not a cross section, but rather a view from the top, um, also made very thin and properly stained, uh, then you're also able to see um, yeah, different cell organelles, for example, um, like, uh, like the nucleus in here. So I can actually go up uh, yet one further. I need to quickly adjust this here. The brightness is, and I've got DIC. My, so for this reason, I have to adjust this here again. Yeah, and now you actually are able to see this much better. Yeah. So the guard cells, yeah, the two of them, and in the middle, um, an opening. And the importance here is the following. Um, in many plants, uh, the, uh, the stoma, the stomates, the openings, are going to close during the night uh, to prevent loss of water. So those guard cells here are responsible for opening, closing the, the hole in the center here so uh, that essentially gases um, are able to enter during the day, like carbon dioxide uh, from the air, and uh, during the night it closes uh, so that uh, water vapor um, is not going to be unnecessarily lost. Yeah. So this is actually quite important and uh, a lot of plants have these. Yeah. And uh, th this is also something that I tried to show you with the glue impression that uh, you're even able to see the surface texture yeah, using the glue. Okay. So I'm going to quickly go back again to the comments section to read a couple of more comments. Okay, he has a video about that if I'm correct. I don't know if this channel... Okay. Yeah, I also forgot which one I talked about. It might be the main channel. Use the glue directly on the port and stick the plant on it. So if you can remove the plant afterwards, maybe it will be more flat. That's possible. Yeah? Would damage to the lens and yeah, that's uh, the immersion oil. Don't use don't use uh, um, uh, the kitchen oil or vegetable oil as a replacement for immersion oil. Okay, okay, would probably work. Uh, I know this is off topic, but do you think I can reuse cover slips? And where would I store them after washing? Uh, that is a very clear answer. What I'm doing is the following. Uh, I am uh, also reusing slides and cover slips. Um, however, I'm not overdoing it. So if uh, there is a damage to the cover slips, I'm simply going to throw it away. Um, you have to be a little bit careful um, because what I do, I just show you just a second. Um, where did I put it? Uh, just uh, here it is. Okay, here it is. What I do is I've got a I'm just going to show you here, down here, just a second. This is from one of my previous, uh, yeah. The, so I simply have a, a, a box here where I simply collect all of my slides. I just uh, throw them in here. Um, they start to dry out, of course, um, if they were moist. And then um, when I've got the box full, I wash them. And um, so uh, the slides I always reuse. Uh, so what I've done is, is I bought myself um, some slightly better quality slides because some of the slides, um, I just show it to you over here. Um, yeah, what they have is, is they have uh, co uh, corners. It's difficult for you to see that they're not sharp. They're 45 degrees and they're a little bit polished here. Yeah, so they're not quite as, um, as sharp. And this means that when I wash them, there's less danger of, of cutting myself. Um, but when you actually clean cover slips, just be careful. Um, if you have, uh, if you had bacteria or some, some, some decomposing material on here, it is quite easily possible to cut yourself. And I have actually, I don't know if you're able to see this here. A few days ago, I actually cut myself here with a cover slip. Okay. Um, so you don't want to have injuries, especially if there was some kind of dirty material um, or decomposing material um, on the slides. So what I usually do is, is I, um, yeah, I rinse it with uh, hot, uh, I rinse it with hot water. Okay. Just a second. Now my monitor disappeared, but maybe I can just readjust it just a second. Okay, I think I 
Okay, now I can see myself again. <laughs> Sorry about this. The reason is because uh, sometimes the, I've got uh, the camera also directly connected. So sometimes uh, the computer and the camera, they kind of interfere with each other. Yeah, but what I wanted to say is be careful that you don't cut yourself when you're cleaning the cover glasses. Okay, so what I usually do is, is I put in boiling hot water on, over the uh, slides and cover glasses simply to kill off everything that might uh, be dangerous there. Okay. I was waiting all week, okay. If you don't want to wait all week, uh, then uh, do watch some of my other videos, if not in this channel, then in my other channel. I have a main channel, um, which is a little bit larger, at least concerning the number of subscribers, and I uh, also publish videos there, okay. Can you wash them using distilled water and store them in a holder? Um, you don't even need distilled water. What you do is, is uh, you wash them in regular, uh, in regular tap water, and you just rinse them in distilled water afterwards so that you do not get any water stains because sometimes the tap water contains calcium carbonate and this deposits and you get some ugly water stains. If you don't want that, you can rinse it um, at the end with distilled water, but the whole washing process, I, I wouldn't use distilled water. Uh, it's not, not necessary. Yeah, it would be just uh, too expensive. How do I preserve a tardigrade culture? That is a, a challenge, okay? Um, such as what temperature of food do tardigrades like? What you can do is, is if, you want, um, um, if you want to preserve tardigrades, keep the moss moist and uh, they, they will be happy. Uh, room temperature is fine. Uh, tardigrades do not like high temperature, but they can withstand low temperature. Okay, so I'm going to go back again a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to go back again a little bit uh, to the, the plant uh, part here because I would like to show you now something um, which um, I kind of liked, which uh, is uh, some leaves here. I, <laughs> I got to tell you a little bit of a story about where I got those leaves from. Um, somebody um, in, yeah, who was living in Thailand, <laughs> um, he uh, basically saw my YouTube uh, channel and a couple of years ago, he sent me some of these leaves. And uh, I said, okay, fine, thank you. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with those? Well, of course, put them under the microscope and I was able to find something quite nice um, because those leaves are a little bit different than the ones. And I have to tell you, I don't know which leaves they are, okay? Unfortunately, uh, but um, there is, they have something quite nice and that is, is they look very fuzzy on the bottom side, okay? That's how, how it looks like. They're completely dried up. But on the bottom side, they're quite fuzzy. And I said, okay, I'm going to put this fuzziness, <laughs> this fuzzy thing, whatever it is, I'm going to put that under the microscope. And um, so how, how do I do that? Well, um, all you do is you scratch a little bit off. And look, look, all of this fuzzy stuff here, okay, is, is now on here. And you know what? I'm just going to add a, um, yeah, I'm going to add uh, some some water and I'm going to simply make a, irregular temporary slide and uh, I don't know it looks a little bit like this is not really mixing well with the water okay um, you know, so maybe this could, could be a case for a uh, for some vegetable oil uh, some people also use actually immersion oil directly in, as a mounting medium okay um, we, we can try that if you want we can try that okay so I'm also running slowly out of cover glasses I, I realize and uh, some of those cover glasses actually uh, sometimes I prefer sometimes I actually prefer washing the cover glasses because they become more cleaner because sometimes even when you buy them new they're, they're pretty dirty they're greasy and grimy but let's put this fuzzy thing here under the microscope and let's see how it looks like is this is actually only one cover glass or is this two ah it's two <laughs> okay it's two cover glasses so now it's again one let's let me quickly wipe it here it is, yeah. and uh, let's have a look at this fuzzy material under the microscope because sometimes in, on Reddit and, and I don't know, in some web forums, people discover these structures and say, what is this? And uh, I'm telling you that is, uh, yeah. Also sometimes in water samples, when you collect some water samples, you might find those. And I was really happy because I found a lot of them on the leaf. So let me quickly remove this again because I think that's one of the most unique looking plant structures that I was able to find and I hope that we're able to see it properly. Okay, it's a little bit too bright. If you turn it down, if you focus, ah, there are too many of them. There are too many of them. But look how they look like. These are so-called trichomes. 
Yeah, they're little, little here like, yeah, star. I mean, they look like like stars. Okay, almost. Or at the first time I thought, well, it looked like tiny spiders. Yeah, but these are plant uh, here are found on the bottom side of the leaf of of some plants. Okay, called trichomes, and um, the thing is the following uh, that. Uh, over here, um, yeah, they're kind of clustered together quite a bit, okay? And uh, what I would like to do now is, and this kind of relates a little bit maybe to the question that I um, uh, yeah, was, uh, was asked before, well, um, can you use oil as, as a mounting medium? And, and, and you know what? Um, I had some problems actually mixing those uh, with, uh, with water, and you can actually see this a little bit here in the center. Um, sometimes there are a little bit some air bubbles in here, so if you just look at, I'm going to use the arrow over here, here. Do, do you see this here? There seems to be water over here, okay? And over here, there's a lot of air. Huh? And here, the, that's basically where the air and the water touch each other. So uh, those trick combs, they apparently, they don't dissolve very well um, in the water, I think. And for this reason, what I would like to do is I would like to see, um, may, maybe, maybe not, Okay, so that's an experiment. Um, maybe oil works better. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to use immersion oil. You can actually use vegetable oil. Not, not for oil immersion microscopy, okay? But as a mounting medium, important difference. Yeah, it's important difference. So let's uh, go back here, okay? And what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to repeat the whole um, experiment. I'm going to scratch off, so I'm just going to use the same slide now, okay? I'm just going to scratch off some of the material. Yeah, okay, so there are some, yeah, this fuzzy material is now on the slide here. It's maybe a little bit difficult for you to see. And what I'm doing now is, is I have to now add a little bit of oil. Um, as I mentioned before, vegetable oil works, kitchen oil, I'm going to use my expensive um, mounting medium, not, not not mounting medium, immersion oil as a mounting medium. Okay. And uh, I'm going to now use, uh, I do not want to use the tweezers. I don't want to contaminate the tweezers with oil. So I'm going to use a disposable toothpick, which I have somewhere in my drawer. Okay. Um, so, and let's see if um, the immersion oil works better to mix the trick combs. Maybe maybe uh, they don't stick together now. That's kind of my hope. I have to be honest with you and I'm, I'm not making this up. I have not tried this yet. So, and uh, let's now uh, dispose of the toothpick and uh, let's wash, let's not wipe, let's wipe, not wash this here. And I'm going to add it here on top of the immersion oil. Let's make it flat. Okay, um, and let's have a look here. Again, this is, uh, just to clarify this, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really important. Yeah, so the immersion oil is now beneath the cover glass. Yeah. And uh, let's see if uh, oil works. Oh, okay, I forgot to switch microscope again. And let's go up. And I think, uh, yeah, there, you see that they're much more separate like I expected. Okay, because, uh, um, yeah, the reason is, is because apparently those trick combs are also hydrophobic. And uh, if you put something hydrophobic together with water, then they try to cluster together. They don't like to get in contact with water. So they kind of uh, form bubbles, yeah. But uh, if you now use a different uh, mounting medium, like a hydrophobic mounting medium, like in this case oil, yeah, then you see that... Uh, yeah, they like to mix much better with the oil and it looks much, I, I think, they look more separate, right? So, I'll go up a little bit with the magnification again. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Yeah. So, the, the, my, the, the point, uh, there were several, there were several reasons why I wanted to show these uh, to you because some people uh, comment and say they find these things somewhere and say, what is this? Especially in dust, for example. What, what weird structure is this? And just I'm telling you, these are some, some, some uh, hair uh, from from some from plants, yeah. called trichomes, 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 and uh, there are yeah a, a wide variety of different uh, different shapes available uh, visible. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the questions here. Um, 
Have you tried just keeping them in a Petri dish with bits of moss? I guess you're referring to the tardigrades. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, if uh, the tardigrades are able to survive uh, outside in nature on a patch of moss, uh, yeah, and if uh, you keep it uh, um, inside uh, and if it's sufficiently moist, then they should also survive, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you as well. Tardigrades are really har um, hardy and I think uh, pretty much they all need some moss, food and room temperature. I think they might even find enough, uh, they might even find enough food if you just uh, leave them alone on the moss. Okay. Actually, I haven't seen tardigrades in the microscope before. I just wanted to know. Okay, there, there are many people who want to know more about tardigrades and I will take this as, an, as, a, as a recommendation to, to, uh, to uh, make a video or a live stream about those. If you want to observe tardigrades yourself and if you want to get yourself a patch of moss, make sure that the moss actually comes from a place that um, yeah, was not too hot. So, um, so in some places you will find moss that has been exposed to quite a, a lot of heat, uh, sunlight. I don't know, maybe growing on some concrete. Um, and uh, I would say no, uh, try to find some moss um, from a place um, that was um, not too hot, like for example, inside a forest. Um, the tardy, I found most tardigrades in moss samples um, in a forest and not on, on, from moss samples that were growing on concrete uh, somewhere next to the road. And I think the reason is, I read a scientific article once about that, that uh, the tardigrades, while they are able to withstand uh, quite cold temperatures, freezing temperatures below freezing, um, they are quite sensitive to heat. And I think that if the moss is now a little bit too hot uh, because it was growing some concrete and sun shining on it and it dried up, and even though they are, they are able to withstand dryness quite well, I think uh, the heat might be a problem for them. So I, I found a lot of tardigrades in, in moss samples, even from dry moss samples from a forest. Um, so this was actually quite surprising, a lot of them. Yeah. Also, you should keep the humidity high. Yes, um, exactly. That, that's, if you get dry moss, um, uh, make it moist and uh, keep it moist for a couple of days and then the tardigrades will also reproduce. Uh, what food can I give tardigrades? Uh, don't worry about the food. They will find enough food on the moss. Bacteria that grow there and so on, they will feed on that. There is no, no reason. As long as you've got moss, I think uh, yeah, it'll be fine. Okay. What are those tulip cells stained with? That's a good question. Thank you for the question that I was asking myself. I think it might have been, I, I'm guessing again, methylene blue because it's blue, <laughs> but it does not say, okay? Uh, it says your tulip um, with uh, stomates, but it does not say how it was stained. That's a little bit of a pity. Um, yeah, but I, um, yeah, but but blue stain in many cases could be um, indeed a, a methylene blue because it's a very general purpose stain. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go back to the questions here. Ah, <laughs> that's a good one. Okay, thank you for the the question here. Um, plants have no muscles, so how do the guard cells open up and close due to differences in osmotic pressure? That's, I think that's a really interesting question here. Um, so let me zoom in here. Um, there is uh, those guard cells. Um, it's correct. Uh, plants have no muscles, but plants still are able to move. For example, carnivorous plants, okay, like the, the catching a fly, like the Venus fly, fly trap. Um, uh, the movement uh, in this case is because of water pressure inside of inside of the cells. So. Uh, the cells of the guard cells here, they have an apparently an asymmetrically thick cell wall. So if water actually uh, goes in into the cells, uh, then it's going to swell in an asymmetric way and this opens and closes the central hole. So uh, movement like this is done over water pressure. Okay, um, so this is, uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, quite a common way how plants are able to do rapid movements. Yeah? Um, are the blue rings on the slides from wet mounts? Okay, this is another one. Um, a few videos back, I have, uh, this refers to the following question here. A few, uh, maybe check the channel and go back um, a few videos where I introduced the so-called slide ringing table. And what I have done here is, is I prepared those slides with a, a nail polish. So I was spinning the slides 
And this is actually one way of also making um, space rings, um, also for dry mounts. Yeah, so um, I put the slide on the slide ringing table and spinning it and then applied some nail polish over here. So this is just regular nail polish uh, yeah, that some people put on their fingernails. And I use blue because it's, it's nice. <laughs> yeah? So I've been uh, experimenting around a lot here, um, but those uh, slides I'm going to probably throw away because uh, I'm not gonna bother scratching it off. Yeah? And the nail polish cannot be removed with uh, water. I'd have to use acetone and that's too, too, too complex, uh, yeah, too, too time consuming for me, okay? Yeah, it's the nail polish, yes, exactly. Some people already answered this, okay? Uh, there are lots of thank yous here. Okay, glad to see your channel is still active. It's been a while. Well, actually, I have to tell you, um, I, this channel, I've been making videos now for uh, live streams uh, for yeah, a couple of months now on this channel. And if you wanna see more of this uh, thing, uh, videos, don't, not only this channel, but also my other main channel, please. Yeah. What's the best way of to preserve a DNA sample, honestly? It depends a little bit of what you, how you want to preserve it. I mean, th theoretically, all of those cells that I showed you right now have preserved DNA. Yeah. So um, dry it. Dry. If, if you things that are dry cannot decompose. That's the general. Um, that's the general recommendation. If you want to preserve something, uh, make sure it's free of water. That's really important because decomposition by bacteria and fungi, they, this, they, they need water. And if something is dry, um, f free of water, uh, then it cannot decompose, okay? Yeah. So um, concerning, um, yeah, you won't be able to see anything in a DNA sample. It's too small. DNA indeed is uh, too small, but uh, if you are able to extract it, I also made some videos, you're actually able to see the consistency of DNA. Uh, you need, uh, e even with an electron microscope, it's very difficult to see DNA, yeah? Yeah, and uh, the DNA video that I made, is was actually not the DNA, but these were proteins and impurities that were sticking to DNA, and that's why you could actually see something that was there. But the double helix itself, it's impossible to see with a light microscope, yeah? Okay, lots of DNA talk here, okay? Uh, do you recall how much magnification you need to see DNA strands way more than what a light microscope is able to provide? Yeah, so um, no, it's not, um, yeah, with light it's not possible. We're, we're, DNA is on a molecular level and it's below, way below the actual uh, limit of what you, a microscope is able to, uh, yeah. I never heard of X-ray crystallography before. Well, <laughs> that is a completely different uh, uh, thing here, X-ray crystallography can be used to study the structure of molecules or, or of DNA. Trichomes, yes, that's uh, basically what I just showed you. Okay, these are the, 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 some plant here. I remember seeing a permanent sample that said something about branched stellate here of a leaf. That I think could be the one. Okay. Uh, can I observe mitosis of water organisms? Is yes, how? Um, the thing is the following, that's an uh, other one. Uh, mitosis is cell division of water microorganisms. Are you able to observe it? Of course, yes, you are able to observe it. And I also made uh, some videos in my other channel about that. Um, I think the video is called like growing water microorganisms. And I found a lot of dividing cells. However, one thing that's really important, you are not able to see the movement of the chromosomes. Because in order to see the chromosomes, you would have to stain them. And staining it actually also kills the water microorganisms. So um, you are able to see cell division, of course. I've uh, seen a lot of it. I've uh, yeah, made videos on this. However, um, it's not uh, possible to actually see the movement of the chromosomes because this actually requires uh, this uh, sample to be stained. So what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to switch back again to a commercial slide. And I'm going to do now a little bit of a theory part because I think it's also important. Um, you see, this is where the teacher starts to <laughs> starting to play again the role of a teacher here. So this here is um, a plant cross section of a leaf of a so-called beech tree. I need to make it a little bit brighter here. Let's change the, the, the to a more neutral color. Okay, and we're gonna go up again to four. Yeah, let's get another magnification a little bit brighter again. Okay, 
What I would like to do here is uh, to uh, explain a little bit about the the, the cr uh, plant cross section um, and uh, making a cross section like this is really difficult. I tried doing this uh, with my microtome, uh, but getting very thin cuts is very very difficult. I found and um, yeah, so I decided I'm just going to for this purpose uh, um, just show you now the cross section of a leaf. So you see that um, yeah, it's a pretty large leaf um, and it's asymmetrical. And I just would like to show you the different layers here. Uh, because the structure of many leaves is similar. So what you have over here is you almost cannot see it, but look at follow the arrow on the very this is the top top part, okay? The, so um, and on the very outside here, what you have you have a layer of wax. This layer of wax actually prevents evaporation and loss of water. Yeah, because uh, leaves, uh, of course, they catch sunlight for photosynthesis, but there is also a problem because of their large surface area, there is a real danger that they lose water and therefore the leaves produce a, um, a waxy layer on the surface, a very thin waxy layer, which kind of prevents the evaporation of water. And then what you have here, maybe I'm going to go up yet another max to six. Let's see, yeah, that's actually better. Let's open it yet further, okay. And we are able to see now the individual cells here uh, much better. So that's a 60 times objective. So there's a layer of wax. And then over here, you see individual cells and that's called the upper epidermis. Yeah, so there is a layer of cells here called the upper epidermis. In many cases, it's transparent to let sunlight in. And then you have over here, look, a very typical layer of vertically stacked cells. It's called the palisade mesophyll. Yeah, so it's a little bit of biology here. I think it's not so important to remember those words now, but I just want to make it clear to you a little bit of, of because we're talking about plants and plant microscopy, about the different layers here, and it's packed full with chloroplasts. So um, in other words, uh, the top layer of a leaf often is dark green, the bottom layer is light green, and because the top layer is really optimized to, to catch sunlight. Yeah? So there are lots of uh, photosynthetic cells here called the palisade layer or the palisade mesophyll. And then over here you have um, a layer of very loosely packed cells called the spongy mesophyll. Be and there are these white air spaces in here. The reason is, is because um, in the bottom here, this is the bottom, uh, the, the, the lower epidermis. This is the layer that we looked at using the glue um, just at the beginning of this uh, live stream. Um, and this is actually the layer that also contains those openings, the stomates. Um, however, it might be a little bit of a question of luck of actually able to finding the, finding one because sometimes uh, when it was cut, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe this one over here yeah, that you just, uh, yeah, it's just cutting next, it was cut maybe just next to it. This could be actually maybe a stomate. Yeah, yeah so that's the lower epidermis here and um, basically the air is, is able to diffuse in and out uh, of uh, the leaf so that the leaf inside um, has enough, uh, essentially has enough, um, yeah, um, oc not oxygen, but uh, carbon dioxide to do photosynthesis. Uh, and uh, so, and what I have uh, done is uh, before, and also the, the tulip uh, specimen was kind of a, yeah, a look, yeah, from, from at, at the bottom, yeah. Um, on, on, on the texture of the bottom side of, of, of the leaf. Yeah? Uh, those structures that you see in here, yeah? These are the so-called the vascular bundles. Uh, this is where water is transported, the, the leaf veins, so to say. Yeah? And you have those large cells in here, in many, most uh, is, uh, referred to as xylem, which transports water uh, from the roots up to the plant. Yeah? So those uh, structures here are all the so-called the vascular bundle or the vascular tissue. Yeah? Yeah, so that is basically the general structure of a leaf. You have also you know, smaller vascular bundles um, all over the place, scattered throughout the leaf, because those leaf cells, of course, they need um, they need uh, uh, not only carbon dioxide, but of course also water for photosynthesis to make glucose. Yeah. yeah so that is basically, um, uh, um, yeah, again a, a different uh, a view. Um, <laughs> usually, when I when I show this. Uh, 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 yeah, when I make, uh, because I'm a biology teacher, of course, uh, as you might already know, when I show uh, these uh, slides also to my students, usually are very surprised uh, by the complexity um, of nature, uh, by the high degree of organization of nature and, and the complexity. Yeah? Ah, yeah, and a little bit difficult to see, but uh, also in one of my previous videos I mentioned this, I don't know if you're able to see those uh, they, uh, I hope that YouTube, uh, the resolution is good enough, but you might see that these are the slight, some slight vertical lines over here. 
yeah, in these cells. These are so-called uh, the, the xylem, which is also important for transporting water. And the vertical lines here, these are simply strengthening, thick, uh, basically in the cell wall of the cells, some strengthening rings to preserve the structure so that the cells don't collapse when they transport the water. Yeah? So there's some xylem visible here, but yeah, you have to look for it. I mean, I um, know what to look out for, so that's why I was searching for those. Um, but it's, uh, I think they're better examples, okay? Yeah. So, but this uh, was a short uh, theoretical excursion because, uh, yeah, um, I think that's uh, yeah, also important. And for those of you just joined, we're looking here at the cross section of a leaf of a beech tree, okay? Okay. Uh, what is the rarest microorganism that I found? Okay, I gotta be very honest with you that I'm not so much into um, into taxonomy of, of microorganisms, um, but um, indeed there are a couple of rare microorganisms. I tell you, I have uh, been looking around for lacrimaria a lot and I haven't had a really tough time finding it. Lacrimaria is a ciliate which has a very, very long neck and I think it looks very fascinating when it moves around and hunts uh, around. Generally, it is not a rare organism, but at least I had some, some issues finding it. Yeah. Um, so trichomes may be an evolutionary adaptation to prevent insect damage. Um, so that is a, a, indeed a, yeah, a, a, um, an interesting comment, um, yes, um, which I also read somewhere. So um, I'm going to put in back the slide with the trick combs, if I find it, here it is, okay. And I think there could be also a second reason um, why um, many plants are fuzzy on the bottom side. And this is also an adaptation uh, to reduce water loss. Um, the reason is the following. Um, sometimes those stomates, when they're too exposed, uh, then there is, it's easier for the water to evaporate and to diffuse out. So sometimes in some plants, um, we'll have actually a lot of hair around the stomates at, at the, um, as well to prevent too much escape of water vapor. To, it's a water preservation mechanism. And it, I can imagine that those trichomes also perform maybe a similar function as well. The bottom side of the leaf with all of the stomates and the openings is, is very fuzzy um, to allow uh, for gas exchange to happen. So carbon dioxide is able to go in and, uh, and oxygen from photosynthesis is able to go out. But water vapor is, is kind of a little bit hindered in the movement. That's a speculation that I have as well. But in, indeed, I also um, heard that uh, um, it, it might be protection against uh, in insects. Yeah? Okay, again, tardigrades can withstand high temperatures, but just as humans prefer shade, if I'm not mistaken. There, yeah, I don't know. There is um, a, an interesting um, article that I read somewhere where they were actually testing tardigrades on temperature. And what I can imagine maybe is, is that when it's in this, um, in this cyst form, maybe that the temperature the ability that they're able to withstand is maybe higher. Okay, so um, it's just I'm just quoting something uh, that I read somewhere. I'm not claiming that uh, I'm entirely correct here. Yeah? What happens if you stain a microorganism like a rotifer or tardigrades with methylene blue? Um, if you use too much of it, it's gonna die. Um, and it's the following. That's the case with many um, stains. Um, the process of staining live microorganisms is referred to as live staining. And this works only if the concentration is sufficiently low. The concentration of the stain is sufficiently low. Methylene blue um, is uh, pretty good in staining the DNA of microorganisms. Um, so it makes a chemical reaction with the DNA. Uh, so any stains work because they do certain chemical reactions. And this might be harmful. Number one. And number two, the methylene blue solution that I use is uh, called also Loeffler's solution, which is not just methylene blue and water, but it also contains alcohol. Uh, I don't know why exactly, uh, maybe to stabilize it probably. Um, and uh, this uh, actually also means that the alcohol um, is um, able to kill microorganisms and it also contains uh, potassium hydroxide. It's a very alkaline as well. Um, so I'm just saying that the live staining is indeed a difficult thing um, because uh, the stain is poisonous or some stains are poisonous uh, for certain uh, microorganisms. Yeah. Have you observed slime molds? Not yet. Um, yeah. Um, how do they move? Well, slime molds are actually uh, made of many cells that move individually like amoeba. 
uh, but collectively the slime molds they seem to behave like a, a separate uh, organism because the individual uh, cells communicate with each other over chemicals so slime molds are one of those interesting cases where you say have to ask yourself is it are these single celled organisms or is it already a multicellular organism so it's kind of in this transition area the individual cells um, are able to survive on their own but on the other hand if there are a lot of them they kind of cooperate and they start to form almost something like a separate super organism yeah in that sense uh, slime molds are quite interesting yeah yeah there is uh, there are comments methylene blue will kill the organism some of you are already answering the questions here thank you how do you get uh, good slides of plant stems okay um how do you how, how about you, you can buy them of course yeah um, but I, I have a whole slide box here where i would also like to show you some plant stem cross sections because they look very beautiful and um, what i also have here is um, in alcohol i'm going to change uh, this over again in alcohol um, i have um, also some uh, plant tissues um, and they do not look green because uh, the alcohol has washed out all of the pigments, right? And you should do that um, as well because otherwise the green chlorophyll is, is too, uh, too dark. And it will actually make it very difficult uh, to see the individual cells. Yeah? So um, I'm going to quickly go on a little bit more here and then I'm going to show you again something. Uh, I saw your video on resolution. Um, are the limitations the same when I don't use an eyepiece and instead only use a tube lens with an objective? The resolution limit um, of microscopes is a physical limit and uh, which is determined by the objective. So essentially the numerical aperture, I have to show, yeah, the numerical aperture which is printed on the objective, like over here it says here, um, uh, 0 0.50, 0 0.50 and so on yeah um, over here 0 0.75 for for yeah for for this one over here um, those that is it determines the resolution there is nothing that you can do to improve the resolution when you change the eyepieces around it's a physical law and uh, indeed this uh, um, yeah there is no possibility to go around I think in 2014 um, a German uh, scientist, physicist, he got the Nobel Prize because he found a trick using fluorescent microscopy, very fancy stuff, uh, to actually uh, improve the resolution also using computers uh, by bypassing the resolution limit. So uh, he, the resolution limit still existed, but he used some computer model, uh, not modeling, but computer calculations and also fluorescent microscopy and to actually calculate an image with a higher resolution. And that's why he got the Nobel Prize. But you cannot go around this resolution limit itself. You cannot um, improve the resolution limit because it's a physical limitation of light itself. Yeah? Where do you recommend to buy compound lenses? You mean uh, you mean uh, objectives for microscopes? Um, uh, well, the thing is the following: normally you would like you would pro if you want to upgrade your microscope with different objectives, you would uh, contact uh, the brand or the company that sold you the microscope. But in many cases, those microscope companies, those brands, uh, yeah, don't sell spare parts because they just received a ready-made packaged microscope uh, from the manufacturer, often in China, um, and they're already boxing it and uh, everything's complete and sometimes they do not have many spare parts. So what I found uh, is, is that uh, a place to find new objectives, maybe even some of, sometimes those that your microscope actually has, is, is by going to aliexpress.com. Aliexpress.com is a Chinese uh, um, website where the different companies are selling their products and I found some surprisingly cheap uh, surprisingly cheap uh, objectives there okay but good re reasonably good ones because the same ones that are actually found on the microscopes when you buy them yeah. if you soak the slides with nail polish in soap water then it makes it easier to remove the lead in less time um, I, I would say uh, um, in soap water that it makes it easier to remove and less time consumed. I did not try yet to soak uh, the slides in water. Uh, I might try it. I, 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 I thought that uh, the, you need uh, some kind of an organic solvent to remove it, but maybe uh, water also is able to uh, remove it a little bit. Yeah. So I, I, uh, thank you for the suggestion. I'll try. Yeah. 
Do you ask your students to watch these videos? <laughs> yes, uh, sometimes, um, some of not maybe not the long live streams, but some of the shorter videos that I make in my other channel, I actually make a little bit in with my students in, in mind. So some of the videos I actually do show to my students as well during my classes. Yeah. Okay, sorry I'm late. Hello from Tennessee. You don't have to apologize, but if you would like to see the start of the video, uh, everything will be uh, available online. Okay. Uh, can I see platelets uh, under the microscope? Should be possible. When I put my blood under the microscope, I was able to see a lot of uh, debris, and I can imagine that some of them are also platelets, thrombocytes, which are important for blood clotting. Okay. What method did you use on the leaf stain? I will tell you honestly, I did not stain it myself. Okay, so this is a commercial slide because it's not the staining that's difficult, but actually getting a very thin cut because those microtomes that I have here, and I'm, I'm going to try one uh, uh, just to, uh, right now, uh, those microtomes that I have here, um, essentially um, you need a sharp blade, and I'll be honest with you that the blade that was provided with this microtome I've never used. Why not? I need to get it here. Just a second. I'm going to show it to you. And then we're going to do a little bit of um, some cutting off of some of the plant material simply to show you what I'm doing. Look, look at this. This is supposed to be the, oh, I have to change. Here we go. Yes, here it is. Okay, that's the microtome. And look, that is the blade that came along with it. I, and that's the blade that I'm supposed to make the cuts with. Look at this. It's a disaster. Look, look, it's, yeah, it's completely useless and I do not have a, um, a, a stone to sharpen it and, and yeah, I said, just forget about it. Um, so this was actually a very um, low cost <laughs> microtome. Okay. Um, so um, I've been experimenting there for a round with, yeah, with those uh, cutting board blades, um, which it's also it looks a little dirty. It's still reasonably sharp, um, but it, it works kind of. Yeah, um, so I might try a little bit, yeah, some cuts using using this system here. Um, uh, it's a commercial permanent slide, yes. Okay. Um, I like to see more of those theoretical excursions. Yes, um, if you want to, I want to, in my other channel, I, I want, and that's anyway a conversation that maybe we can have a little bit is um, because I have two YouTube channels and in this one here, I want to dedicate mostly with uh, some practical stuff and, and doing some lab work and experimenting around. And the other one, I want to dedicate a little bit more with theoretical background. Um, yeah, sometimes it's difficult to, to keep them apart a little bit, okay? Do any microorganisms fluoresce under UV light? Uh, yes, um, and specifically also microorganisms that have uh, chloroplasts. It's called autofluorescence of the chloroplast. The chloroplasts start to shine red. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, is I'm going to try to make some, I don't know if this is gonna work well because the yeah, thing here is uh, yeah a little bit soft already, but I'm going to try, and again, this is, I've not tried it with, uh, the peppers before okay so maybe this is not going to be a <laughs> maybe this is not going to be a very good way i don't know but i would like to have a look um, at uh, some of the cells here okay and uh, in order to look at this uh, you basically put it in here okay there is a clamp here on the side um, and this clamp by turning it is able to yeah, move this little yeah thing here a screw, I mean, it's not a clamp. It's a, it's a screw that is able to move this clamp and let's try it, to put it in like this. No, I first have to, before I do that, let's take it out again. I have to move it completely down, all the way down. So that, I, yeah, see, it will move the whole cylinder downwards. And uh, now, I'm, now I'm able to, maybe it's a little too small, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to clamp it in now. So this is gonna be, um, yeah, ah, you can't see it. It's gonna be exciting now. And uh, I don't know, uh, let's give it a try. Okay, so this was the first cut and then I have to rotate this a little bit. Ah, and I see already that this, uh, uh, this skin here is a problem. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sliding over the skin. So I'm going to now turn it out a little bit. And, yeah. Uh, see, not enough. I think I'm not going to be very lucky with this because the pepper is already kind of dry. And yeah, see, I'm sliding over it, so I'm not the knife is not able to catch anything. 
Okay, so that is maybe, yep, and a demonstration of how it's not working. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, this is a demonstration of how it's not working. The knife probably not being the sharpest and also the the plant material itself being very soft. Yeah, see, it's always uh, scratching over the surface and is uh, not catching. Yeah, and no. Nah. Okay, here, maybe this one is now, yeah, possible. So let's have a look at this. Um, I need to find a blank slide. Okay, get a thin layer here. And uh, of course, a drop of water goes on top. And a cover glass. And let's have a look. Yeah, it's quite thick. Okay. Um, generally, thick specimens are pretty bad because they cover up uh, so many details. Um, but it's a little bit of a proof of concept as well. And I just want to see myself if uh, what I'm able to find here. Yep. And. Uh, Yep, here we are, lots of air bubbles. Let's go down with a magnification here, like this. And uh, it's actually better than I anticipated. Okay. Um, and what we're able to see here, all of those uh, things here, that's these are the cell walls. This, but I think I'm going to go up with the magnification yet further. Okay. Yeah. So all of these uh, things here on the side are the thin cell walls of, well, actually, they're not just so thin as a matter of quite thick yeah yeah but it's it's not a very nice looking yeah not a very nice looking um if you're doing something like this uh, with uh, very green leaves then you're actually able to see that the, the air bubbles that you see over here will actually start to grow because of the cells doing photosynthesis yeah but i actually it's thinner than i anticipated because when i focus through the specimen there are not so many cell layers. It's actually better than I expected. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, just a short uh, demonstration. Um, what else did I want to do? Just a second. Uh, go back here to the some of the comments here. Um, where is this? Dinoflagellates in ocean waves are phosphorescent. Yeah, some of them glow on their own. They or they're luminescent. You call this, yeah. Uh, of a substitute for methylene blue. Uh, what you can try is the following. It's not methylene blue. It might. It, I think it doesn't work quite as well. But I have tried this as well. Um, look, I highly recommend that you before you go shopping for any fancy stains that you try the following. What you call a fountain pen. Look at this. This ink here uh, works quite nice as well. Okay, um, so uh, try this first. And uh, if you want to uh, try a staining uh, protocol, then what you do is the following: you, um, yeah, I don't know. It's let, yeah. Let's have a look at, at at this here. This was the one that I made before. Remember the remember the one that is scratched. Let me show you, and I'm going to show you some staining. Remember, this was the one with the two cell layers. Um, still a little bit thick. Um, and what you do is, is uh, or maybe the other one is better because it's simply brighter. And what you do is, is let's just stain it just so that you see how, how I do that. Yeah? You got to be a little bit careful. Um, and uh, yeah, you go to the side here. And what you do is, is you squeeze out um, a little bit of the ink into a little dish you know what i'm going to use this one here i'm not going to use a little dish i'm going to use <laughs> one of my slides okay and uh, let's use this as a stain for yeah and uh, let me see where is my pipette oh, i'm gonna use this here 
Okay. Well, it's, it's, that's a lot. And uh, now have a look at uh, the. Just gonna dem at, on, on the bottom. Okay. Have a have a look here now. Um, yeah, at the microscope. And what you want to do is, is very carefully at the edge of the cover glass. You want to add a little bit of the um, yeah methylene, not methylene blue, but in this case it's the ink. And then what you do is, is you're gonna see it's extremely blue yeah, on the side. But what you might want to do is you might want to wait a little bit until the ink uh, diffuses across. And usually what will happen um, is, is that uh, um, after a couple of minutes when the ink diffuses uh, that uh, um, some of the cells will actually start to uh, turn blue. Um, but this here is way too blue. Okay, So you have to actually look at the place uh, where the ink later on will go to. Right, and then it will actually stain the cells better. So that would be one uh, example here. I'm gonna do the other one over here, yeah, as well. And another thing that I recommend is, is maybe that you uh, remove any excess ink as well. Yeah? Okay, I'm not... okay. And then you have to kind of wait until the ink starts to reach. See how it's traveling. You have to kind of wait until the ink starts to reach uh, the cells and then you can hope that it stains the cells. I can tell you that this uh, fountain pen ink works perfect for staining cheek cells. It's really nice for staining cheek cells, but I'm not so sure if, if, if plant cells are so suitable here. Okay. Yeah, it's not reached it yet. I'm just going to push it a little. Where is this? Yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes, if there is, uh, if the ink uh, takes too long to diffuse, then what you might want to try is you might to take some tissue paper and soak uh, away some of uh, some of the water. Yeah. Um, but in any case, it uh, also you can see that it allows you to to make very nice <laughs> the black background, a nice blue background as well. If you want to take pictures. Yeah. Um, More than computational has to be certain sample as well. I think this refers again to the um, uh, to this um, uh, this new technique. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically by changing. I think the frequency of the different fluorescent uh, uh, light. Uh, you can make different parts of the specimen light up because you use different fluorescent antibodies. So it's pretty fa pretty advanced stuff. Yeah. How often should I clean my eyepieces? Is there a disadvantage of cleaning my eyepieces objectives too much? I will be very honest with you. There is no reason for you to clean your objectives unless they become dirty. Um, and they should not become dirty because um, there is no reason for them to become dirty unless you accidentally uh, dip them into immersion oil um, or into water. Um, otherwise, there is no real reason to clean them. Um, eyepieces um, yeah, should be cleaned when they um, essentially because of the eyelashes, uh, there is grease and oil on it. And this kind of makes the surface of the eyepieces also a little bit dirty. Um, and if you feel that it's too dirty, then you take some cotton swabs, some, some, some Q-tips, you dip it in alcohol and you carefully remove the grease. Yeah, but there should not be too much. Uh, don't use, don't use for cleaning eyepieces. Don't use any any um, uh, like eyeglass cleaning solutions or or things like this. Yeah, just uh, alcohol. Yeah. Do you need to fixate in botanic preparate with FAA solution? I don't know F. Uh, I don't know FAA the abbreviation right now. Uh, I have to be honest. Okay. Pretty much everything uh, alive has tiny amount of autofluorescence. Okay. Um, do you know any animals that can eat hydras? Uh, I, I think fish. Um, yeah, I can imagine some fish might eat them. Yeah, um, there are certain fish that like to scavenge what the biofilm, yeah, of plants and so on. They might eat pretty much anything. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, this is actually also one of the things that I was uh, thinking about. Um, there are those uh, those uh, sh uh, razors, um, not not those ones with multiple blades, but actually with uh, the very sharp individual blades. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm, um, I'm going to experiment with that. I actually already wanted to do that. Yeah. Uh, because those razors are so sharp uh, then, and um, with those uh, razors they have this, um, um, yeah, you have to put it in and then you can shave yourself and uh, then maybe this is also going to work um, instead of a microtome knife. Yeah. 
various chemicals in cells, autofluorous, NADH, uh, FAD, FADS. If you froze the plant material first, would you be able to get a thinner slice, but the cells would rupture from the... Uh, what you can do is the following. I'm just going to show this to you here. The question was, is, is um, because if it's the mid plant material is too soft, is it not possible to somehow make it a little bit harder? Yes, um, freezing might not be mo the most practical thing, but what you, I'm just gonna show this to you. Um, if you take out one of these here, leaves. Okay, that's uh, because they're an alcohol, they're almost brittle. Okay, um, when you put leaves into alcohol, or any plant material, uh, they will harden. And uh, the problem, however, is the following. When I microtome, the, microtome it and the, water eva the, the alcohol evaporates, then it starts to shrink extremely. So this is a little bit of a, a, a processing problem that I experienced. Um, so what you have to do is you've got to cut it very quickly before the alcohol evaporates, and then you have to quickly put it into water so that it starts to swell again. Yeah. Oh, you see, a, 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 you're just bumped into it and it's already started to break. Yeah, it's it's very brittle. Yeah, if it's a pure, pure alcohol. As soon, yeah, see, it starts to rip here. Yeah, very brittle. And if you put it into, if you put it into water again, then it will become a very soft again. Yeah, so you see that even though it's possible to harden it, it's again a little, it's difficult to, yeah, it's still difficult to, to cut it. See, it's, it's kind of falling apart. Yeah. So that's a little bit some of the things that um, yeah um, where one has to experiment a, a little bit around. Yeah. Hi. Yes. Hello. Wow. Lots of comments again. That could cause the cells to rupture due to ice crystals forming. Yeah, that, that's another problem. Um, I don't know if the cell wall is uh, strong enough to to prevent the cells from rupturing. Okay. Can you make a transverse section of the leaf? I tried doing that, and I have to tell you, I don't know where did I put it. Uh, I tried doing it, but I was not happy with the result, okay? So I'm going to show you um, this leaf here. I've prepared before I started the live stream. I actually prepared a, um, a cross section to show it to you. And what I have done is I have used the, uh, the microtome um, and I squeezed it. Um, in uh, between um, um, yeah, uh, some carrots. So what I've done is I used the carrot, um, I made a little um, yeah, slice into the carrot and put the, the leaf in yeah, to clamp it in. So I used the carrot um, as, a, as a holder for the leaf. And this is basically what I made here. So, and I'm going to show this to you, um, what I was able to, yeah. So I, I soaked the leaf in water to make it softer, otherwise it's too brittle. And, uh, what I have here is, let me put it back again here, the filter. I need to make it a little, and where is it? No, that's not the one, is it? Uh, where is this? Uh, just a second. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's already some ear bubbles. So I need much more light. And I was not entirely satisfied, um, but um, this one, I tried to make a cross section, but this is now the view from the top, okay? Uh, because um, I could not uh, put put the, the leaf section on its corner, on its side. Yeah? It always uh, fell flat. And uh, however, because it was an alcohol and because uh, all of the pigments were removed, I'm still able, even though it's a complete leaf, I'm still able to see the individual cells and even some of the stomates. Yeah. So I'm actually looking through several, the whole leaf right now. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a, of, a, of a difficulty that I had. So I was able to slice it like this. It's not even very thin. It's actually quite thick. Yeah. Um, but I was not able to put it on the corner. Yeah. So and is there somewhere else, another one? Where's the second one? I have I had another one as well, which I have to find. Was it this one here? I don't know. It started to, uh, I don't, yeah. It's not, uh, I think it started to, to, to dry up a little bit. No, in any case, um, I, I tried to make those cross sections, but um, it's, uh, I need a little more time to, um, to optimize, to optimize this a little bit. Yeah? Getting those very, getting them very thin was a little bit difficult. But uh, again, with a new shade, with a different shaver or razor, it might be, razor blade, it might be better. Yeah? Um, 
I don't know about you for plants, but animal tissues is pretty common to freeze and slice. You use something called uh, cryostat microtome. I think it helps you get the thinner for sure. Yup, but that is uh, wow, quite uh, to get a yeah to cut frozen samples is I think quite elaborate. Yeah, I could be wrong, but I think it's done with uh, liquid nitrogen. Yes. Um, I have also worked with liquid nitrogen. You drop it into the um, liquid nitrogen. And the interesting thing, what I heard is, is that um, if you put it into a microtome, um, the frozen sample, and if you cut it with a frozen sample, then sometimes you do not even need to advance it, but simply the temperature change, which causes the sample to expand, is already enough so that you're able to make uh, cuts. Yeah? That's quite, uh, quite fascinating. Yeah. Um, Am I going to show any pond water? Not today, because uh, today I wanted to dedicate it primarily to plant tissues. But if you're interested, uh, sure, I can do that in the upcoming videos again. Yeah. Have you ever used an inverted microscope? Yes, I have, but this has been a long time ago at university. Um, in, I use them uh, to uh, actually for cell culture too. When you're growing cells in a petri dish, uh, then um, you uh, it's easier to use an inverted microscope. Perhaps replacing the water cells with glycerin or propylene glycol for freeze that perhaps. Yeah, so that's again the, 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 the microtubing of a frozen sample. Glycerin to prevent the formation of crystals and, and uh, the expansion of the water so that the cells break. Okay. So, um, alcohol. Oh, okay. What are we looking at? Well, somebody who, um, yeah, well, I don't know which one you're referring to right now. This was what I just showed you was actually a, um, a section of um, a de-stained uh, plant leaf uh, where I essentially removed all of the pigments using um, alcohol. Yeah? And I just wanted to show it to you that uh, if you remove the alcohol, um, even if you have m several cell layers, you're still able to see the individual um, shapes of, of the plant cells. Okay. So, wow, what time is it? It's already one and a half hours. I cannot believe this. I, again, lost my sense of time. <laughs> um, so, um, for those of you who just uh, joined in or joined in late, um, I dedicated this uh, live stream today um, to, uh, yeah, to the observation of some, some plant tissues. And, uh, yeah, and also um, I wanted to also show you over here those uh, so-called the trick combs. And I think... Uh, because I kind of like them. And here I used some immersion oil and over here I used uh, some, some, some water um, as a, a mounting medium. And you can see that I think that's maybe the important take home message that in this case, the water and the trichomes did not mix very well and this caused them to cluster together in an air bubble, right? Um, and you see over here, um, here that's uh, where there's the water and in the center here, this is where there is air. And for this reason, I said that uh, some for some specimens, because this was actually also one of the questions, for some specimens, it might be more um, useful to use a hydrophobic um, yeah, mounting medium like oil. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is basically one thing. Then I showed a little bit uh, some uh, some glue, um, a little bit with uh, yeah, some uh, some glue. So what I've done is I've applied a little bit of, of, of uh, glue on the bottom side of some of the leaves. And uh, then you can carefully try to peel off the glue. It only works if the leaf is uh, re relatively smooth on the bottom. Yeah? So the glue goes off and is now and now carries the impression of the surface texture of the leaf. And you're also able to see then the, the structure of the cells. So that's another thing that I talked about. Um, I also showed you um, how uh, to prepare um, yeah, a vegetable, those vegetables that have a skin. Okay. So I suggest that you um, try to scratch off, yeah, scratch off some of the material here. Ah, okay. Like this. And that you put the skin over here uh, under the microscope. You're also able to see some cells this way. Yeah. And uh, I also showed you um, yeah, a, a commercial slide, um, um, a commercially prepared one, um, which uh, shows, I think, this, this structures uh, quite nicely as well. Okay. Um, yeah. I would like to say then, yeah, I think it's enough for today. It's quite long, one hour and 40 minutes uh, again. Um, if you have any, um, any suggestions uh, um, about things that I could look under the microscope, then please uh, yeah, do write it in the comments, of course. Um, I always uh, receive a lot of suggestions, of course. I cannot always uh, address all of them, all of the comments, uh, but uh, 
I'm, I read all of them and uh, then I'm going to try to pick up on them. Okay. Um, yeah. If you have any sp particular wishes or, or, or things that you want me to put under the microscope, then that's of course a possibility. And I don't know, it, 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 it's also a possibility if you want to share your own observations, if you want to send me pictures or small video clips or something like that, please do that. Okay. Um, Oliver at microbehunter.com. And uh, if you send me pictures uh, or, or small, even small video clips or so, I can definitely include them also in the live stream. Uh, yeah, because after all, we are a community here and uh, we can learn from each other because it's a, microscopy is a very diverse hobby with different people have different experiences, specializations, a lot of different knowledges out there. And if you want to share yours, uh, we can of course use uh, this platform here as well to share some of the ideas. Okay, um, I'm going to quickly go through the remaining questions, but I won't, won't spend too much time here. Okay, a lot of thank yous here. Thank you back, of course. Okay, um, by the way, it's me, the 10 year old from your Q&A and phone adapt live stream. Okay, this is my second live stream. Okay, I'm happy that you like it. Have you observed cells from a pair? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah, the pair cells, they have to be, the pair better be very soft because uh, they have uh, little grains in them, um, which uh, can be also observed, yeah? But the pear has to be so uh, soft, yeah? Um, can you take a look at some of the videos for tardigrade clips? Okay, okay. Uh, I, can, I can have a look at that, and I can also try to put some tardigrades under the microscopes, yeah? The sc uh, sclerids, yes, the gritty cells. Just one more question. Are hydras really immortal? Oh, I love this question. I, I, <laughs> Uh, uh, this is a slightly philosophical question. Are hydras really immortal? And strictly speaking, it's a, it's a question of definition. And I would, you can even say that pretty much any organism is immortal. Because uh, if you, even if you have plants, for example, okay, um, they reproduce and they continue to grow in the next generation. But I think what you really refer to, I mean, in that sense, even humans can be considered immortal because the human species continues to live on the next generation. But I think that what you're referring to is the ability of hydra to regenerate asexually. And it is indeed like this, that if you um, essentially cut off a hydra, a part of it, then you've got two of them. In that sense, it is indeed uh, the case that some hydras, um, yeah, they don't have an inherent uh, life limit of lifespan. Yeah? They simply keep on reproducing and, and so on. So in that sense, it, it, it's a question of a little bit of what, what immortality, immortality means. Uh, in, it's a question of definition. But strictly speaking, I get what you mean. And you can consider them immortal because they have an, a remarkably high um, ability to regenerate. Yeah? And they do not have this inherited, inherited limited lifespan. Yeah? So yeah, I just had to answer this because it's an interesting question. Um, what is the best fruit to observe under the microscope? Uh, if you already asked me, uh, put a banana under the microscope, a soft banana, and squeeze it. Uh, because Why? Because it's easy to prepare. Okay, You don't have to do any cuts. Take a small, a very small sample of a banana and squeeze it, and you're able to see the starch grains of the banana as well. Yeah. So um, quick uh, recommendation simply because it's so easy to do. Yeah. And can heat destroy hydros? Of course. Um, can heat can destroy hydras uh, like any living thing certain chemicals can do that when they're eaten they die um, but they do not necessarily have an inherent lim limited lifespan okay um, yeah so that's uh, essentially what i meant yeah okay uh, onion cells are especially large yes they are uh, but uh, I would say um, there are, I've made a lot of onion cell videos already, also for onion cell staining. I would recommend that you watch those um, and find them in, the, in either in this channel or in my other channel. But now I really would like to say thank you um, again uh, for having joined uh, in this Saturday. I hope that I'm able to see you again next Saturday. Well, uh, I still have to think of a topic for next week. <laughs> but if you have any recommendations, then please, of course, uh, write them down. I'm going to leave it at that now. I wish you all the best. Uh, enjoy microscopy, happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye bye. Have a nice, have a nice weekend.